stated august 25 2023 um to see in this discussion uh look let, let, let us look at the uh, news articles that are present in the in the newspaper Does, uh, let us get into the list, uh, discussion take a look at this news the defense acquisition council had a meeting led by defense minister rajnath singh the council agreed to buy a special equipment to the helicopter self operating system for army units new light machine guns and bridge laying tanks they are also buying weapons for navy helicopters called mh60 also called as seahawk helicopter note that the navy is already getting 24 c of helicopters from usa in addition to this rug by um, laptops tablets for armies are also been approved member members all these uh, those procurement will be sourced indigenously so these are the decisions taken in different acquisition councils meeting held recently so in our discussion let us know about the defense acquisition council in detail some important points mentioned in the news articles uh, defense acquisition council is the highest decision making body for acquiring defense uh, equipments for indian armed forces it was set up in 2001 after kargil war uh, dac defense acquisition council is like a special team for buying special uh, buying things related to defense like uh, weapons and equipments it meets under the leadership of defense minister and it may uh, it has many members including chief of indian army air force and the dac has authority to approve acquisitions up to 300 crore for acquisitions above 300 crore and the dac must get approval from cabinet committee on security so the dac meets regularly to consider the proposals for acquisition of defense equipments and services uh, currently dac has granted an uh, acceptance uh, of necessity to enhance the efficiency of indian air force here uh, the acceptance of necessary necessity means government has accepted the need for equipment and this is the first step in procurement process uh, now we shall uh, see what are the equipments approved by defense acquisition council firstly india is going to buy the electronic warfare shoot for mi 17 helicopters here the electronic warfare shoot is a special set of tools that will help in dealing with electronic stuffs like um, signals and communications for example it can helps us to listen to enemy signals or disrupt their communication system so this is the meaning of electronic warfare shoot then dac also approved the buying of new light machine guns for army this will enhance the fighting capabilities of our army next we are also going to buy bridge laying tank the bridge laying tank is a special type of tank used to by military to lay down a bridge quickly the bridge helps other uh, vehicles like trucks and tanks to cross the river so these are the things which are approved by dac recently so this is all about this discussion let us move on to the next topic uh, look at this editorial article this editorial is written by mr mahesh Sachdev, uh, Mr. Mahesh Sachdev is a retired Indian Forest Service officer who served as an ambassador to Algeria and High Commissioner to Nigeria. So the points mentioned in this editorial are very relevant to our examinations. In um, in this editorial, the author talks about challenges in Africa like bad governance, terrorism, tribal conflict, and overall decrease in the international support. the author also highlights the strong relationship between the india and africa so this is the overall essence of the article so in the discussion we will see all the points mentioned in this art editorial in detail before that we have the highlighted the syllabus for your reference africa is a vast and diverse continent it is second largest continent in the world and it has over 1.4 billion people it has diverse cultural language and ethnicities in addition to this this continent is gifted with a lot of natural resources so there is a huge potential for growth and advancement despite uh, all these advantages uh, the continent of africa is still largely poor and underdeveloped now what is the reason for this? what are the challenges that africa is facing the first let us um, see the political challenges the continent is highly misgoverned now why is the misgovernance is relevant in most of the african countries the first reason is massive corruption and in all political institutions the second reason is africa's 
ட்ரைபல் டைவர்சிட்டி த காண்டினென்ட் இஸ் இன்ஹாபிட்டட் பை எ லாட் ஆஃப் ட்ரைப்ஸ் ஸோ தீஸ் ட்ரைப்ஸ் ஹேவ் அ லாட் ஆஃப் ரிவல்ட்ரி அமாங் தெம் ஆல் ஆல்சோ டியூ டு நெப்போட்டிசம் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் தி பொலிட்டிக்கல் இன்ஸ்டியூஷன்ஸ் ஆர் நா டாமினேட்டட் பை ரூலிங் ட்ரைப்ஸ் தேர் பை எலிமினேட்டிங் தி ரெப்ரஸன்டேஷன் ஆஃப் அதர் ட்ரைப்ஸ் ஸோ திஸ் ரிசல்டட் இன் சோஷியல் டென்ஷன்ஸ் இன் மெனி ஆஃப்ரிக்கன் கண்ட்ரீஸ் தென் ரீசெண்ட்லி தேர் ஹேஸ் பீன் இன்க்ரீஸ்ட் இன்சிடென்ஸ் ஆஃப் இஸ்லாமிக் டெரர் த லாஸ்ட் அண்ட் த மோஸ்ட் இம்பார்ட்டண்ட் பொலிட்டிக்கல் சேலஞ்சஸ் த ரைஸ் ஆஃப் டிக்டேட்டர்ஷிப் இன் ஆஃப்ரிக்கா ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் இன் கண்ட்ரீஸ் லைக் எஜிப்ட் பர்கினியா ஃபேசோ மாலி அந்த நைகர் மிலிட்ரி ஜென்ரல்ஸ் ஹாவ் ஓவர் த்ரேட் தி டெமோக்ராட்டிக்கலி எலக்டட் லீடர்ஸ் அண்ட் நவ் திஸ் இஸ் ஒய் திஸ் இஸ் ஹேப்பனிங் நவ் இஸ் தேர் இஸ் அ ரைஸ் இன் மிலிட்ரி டிக்டேட்டர்ஷிப் இன் ஆஃப்ரிக்கா அக்கார்டிங் டு த ஆத்தர் ஆஃப் த எடிட்டோரியல் த குளோபல் பவர்ஸ் லைக் யூஎஸ் ரஷ்யா ஃப்ரான்ஸ் ஹவ் இன்டர்வீன் இன் ஆஃப்ரிக்கா டு கீப் த டிக்டேட்டர்ஷிப் இன் பவர் அண்ட் தீஸ் டெவலப்டு கண்ட்ரீஸ் சப்போர்ட் த டிக்டேட்டர்ஸ் டு ப்ரொடக்ட் தேர் ஓன் எக்கனாமிக் இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் சச் ஆஸ் யுரேனியம் இன் நைகர் கோல்ட் இன் சென்ட்ரல் ஆஃப்ரிக்கன் ரிப்பப்ளிக் அண்ட் ஆயில் இன் லிபியா so these are the political challenges faced by africa now coming to the economic challenges the first issue is high food inflation food infl- high food inflation is mainly caused by climate change climate change has affected the agricultural productivity the drop in production has pushed up the food prices also due to high food inflation the pricing the purchasing power of the common people declined this has resulted in overall decline in the standard of living and then there is a issue of unplanned urbanization this has resulted in growth of slums around the cities with the no access to basic communi- amenities Mm. And then there is a issue of high unemployment unemployed youths are likely to get into protest political violence, conflicts uh, and dragged into terrorist groups so these are the economic challenges faced by africa the last major challenge is uh, major decline in the international support see africa for past few decades have got international support to solve its problems but recently this support is on decline due to various reasons for example let us take china china has been africa's largest trading partner and investor but recently due to the slowdown in chinese economy the Af- africa china uh, trade has come down in addition to this belt and road initiative of china has pushed many african countries into the un sustainable dips due to uh, due to this chinese support for africa has been slowly declining in in the case of western countries like us uk france their economic turn down has reduced their support to africa finally let us take up uh, clo- uh, russia uh, russia used wagner group to provide military support in africa but with the death of the wagner chief uh, how uh, russia will approach africa in future is unclear see these are the important challenges that are africa is witnessing right now how th- how can these challenges can be addressed here are the key challenges um, here are the here the chal- uh, key allies with the india um, india can leverage its position to help africa in its growth to understand this first we must know about india africa relations historically india and african countries share a history of colonial oppression and struggle for independence this historical connection has led to our mutual understanding between india and african countries here mahatma gandhi's movement against apartheid in south africa can be highlighted economically also india and africa are, are well connected and they engage in trade and investment across various sectors india imports raw materials like minerals and oil from africa and exports goods like pharmaceuticals machinery and uh, textiles see india africa trade reached 98 billion in 2022 also note that india the fifth largest investor in africa india has also been using its soft power in africa through various capacity building activities a uh, capacity building activities and uh, 
Uh, India has extended over 12.37 billion in the concessional uh, loan to African countries. India has also completed 197 projects and has provided 42,000 scholarships since 2015. Culturally, also both India and Africa are connected through its diaspora. Currently, around 3 million people of India are uh, Indian origin are living in Africa. Lastly, to ensure the regional stability and security in Africa, India has been contributing to united nations peacekeeping mission in africa so these are the some of the highlights of the india africa relationship now how can india africa firstly india can provide a voice for african nations in multilateral forums like g20 currently only african nations to be represented in g20 in south africa this clearly shows that uh, this clearly shows Uh, that african nations lack a proper uh, representation in the uh, uh, representation in the multilateral forum with the india hosting g20 summit this year india can work towards uh, providing full membership to african union at g20 and this will increase the representation of african countries and this in turn will address the decreasing international support in africa secondly india can help africa to build a strong socio political institutions here socio political institutions are structures within the society that uh, plays a significant role in shaping both the so social and political aspects of the society for example an indian judiciary is a strong socio political institution so india can uh, help uh, africa to create strong socio political institutions like uh, indian ind- independent judiciary and stable electoral systems and inclusive constitution and these institutions will contribute to contribute to the overall stability and functioning of the african nations by providing a framework for addressing the social issues and re- resolving conflicts then india can share its local innovation to address the challenges in africa see almost all african countries are dev- developing countries like india so they must go through a similar uh, problems like us recently indian innovations like uh, jam trinity a direct benefit transfer unified payments interface and the aspirational district program have successfully addressed various challenges in india these innovations can be shared with african countries lastly india must engage with africa in more participatory way until now countries like us uk france in china russia have engaged with africa for the selfish economic gains india should not replicate this by engaging in a participatory way india can help africa realize its true potential so this is all regarding this discussion now let us move on into the next topic uh, take a look at this article yesterday our prime minister narendra modi has talked about the fairness in the e-commerce between the big and small industries he wanted to connect the small businesses with the world supply chain systems and he also asked the global leaders to focus on the small and medium medium sized industries because they provide the jobs for most people and contribute a lot to world's economy mr modi said that supporting msme industries help the whole society and india has been working on this as a g20 president so in this news article discussion let us look know about importance of msme and some steps taken by the government to develop the msmes msme means micro small and medium enterprise they are industries that are involved in production manufacturing and processing of goods and um, commodities uh, the concept of msme was first introduced by government of india in micro small and medium enterprise development act 2006 so the msme industries are regulated by this act only these industries are managed by ministry of msme so this is the basic information about msme now we shall see the importance of msme in india first is the they contribute to the gdp growth Uh, msme sector contributes around 33 percentage of india's gdp they are also a major source of exports and has contributed 42.6 percentage of share in india's exports the next important significance is uh, job creation 
MSME is our second largest job creators in India after agriculture. About 40% of the India's workforce is present in MSME sector. Next important significance is inclusive growth. MSME is promote inclusive growth by providing employment opportunities in rural areas especially to the peoples belonging to weaker sections of the society for example cottage industries khadi and village industry require low per capita investment and they employ a large number of women in rural areas also note that msme sector is resilient to global economic shocks this is because the sector is made by, made up of large number of small independent businesses and these businesses are able to adapt to changing market conditions more easily than larger businesses ultimately msmes can play a significant role in creating a inclusive and sustainable society the encourage uh, balanced regional development gender equity and financial inclusion in rural areas so the msme sector is often referred to as backbone of indian economy this is the because it plays a vital role in supporting the growth of other sectors such as agricultural manufacturing and service sector so this is about the significance of the msme sector now um, let us see the important initiatives taken by government to promote the msme sector first is the prime minister employment generation program this scheme is implemented by khadi village industry commission under under ministry of msme uh, and this scheme aims to generate the employment opportunity in rural and urban areas second is credit linked cap- capital subsidy scheme it provides financial assistance to uh, micro small and medium enterprises for the purpose of technological upgradation under the scheme msme can get a capital subsidy of up to 15 percentage for establishing a new plant or equipment that is used for technology upgradation next of important initiative is uh, uh, ramp scheme raising and raising rising and accelerating msme performance so the scheme was launched in 2022 and it helps in promoting the green technology in msme sector it also provides the ease of doing business for msme industries another important step taken to improve the msme sector is mudra loan scheme it was launched in 2015 and it provides loan of up to 10 lakh to msme industries are uh, note that mudra scheme has three types of loans uh, tarun where loan up to 10 lakh is uh, given kishor the loan is given up to 5 lakhs and sishu where the loan is given up to 50000 these are the three types of loan under mudra so these are the important measures taken by government to promote the msme sector so this discussion we have seen basics about msme sector signi pickens of the msme to india and some initiatives taken by government to develop your same sector and so this is all about this discussion let us move on into the next topic look at this news article tamil nadu has requested the karnataka to release more water from kaveri river uh, karnataka has refused to release more water saying that Karna- Ka- kaveri already has less amount of water due to low rainfall Ka- karnataka has to told the supreme court that tamil nadu's request has no legal basis according to kaveri water dispute uh, tribunal so this is the crux of the news article given here in this context let us learn about the interstate water disputes uh, constitutional provisions and acts regarding it at present interested what interstate water dispute are one of the major controversial issues in indian federalism the recent issue cases of Kar- K- krishna water uh, uh, dispute kaveri water dispute satellites yamuna link canal are examples of interstate water disputes various tribunals are established to resolve these disputes but the problem is still ongoing now let us see the constitutional uh, provisions regarding the interstate uh, uh, see the entry 17 of the state list Uh, deals with the water that is water supply irrigation uh, canal uh, drainage uh, and strong water, uh, water storage and uh, hi- hydro power entry 56 of union list empowers the central government for regulation and development of interstate uh, rivers uh. so the, with the respect to interstate rivers central government has the power to regulate it according to the article 262 of the indian constitution 
parliament has the power to resolve the interstate disputes by creating a law so this article 262 deals with the interstate water dispute it also says that supreme court or any other court cannot involved in this matter so under this article uh, 262 parliament has created two laws the river boats act as a 1956 and uh, the interstate water dispute act 1956 first river board act 1956 under this as a act as a central government can create a river boards for regulation of interstate rivers but interestingly no river board um, has been created till now then interstate water disputes act 1956 according to the act central government can create a tribunal for resolving the interstate water disputes between the two or more states note that the tribunal has power of civil court and decision of tribunal could be final and binding this means that the decision of the tribunal cannot be challenged in any court so so far the central government has set up the nine interstate um, water dispute tribunal name of the tribunals the year in which they were constituted and the state involved in the disputes are mentioned here you can go through it so we have seen constitutional provisions regarding interstate water disputes then interstate water dispute tribunal so this is all about this discussion let us move on into the next part of our discussion uh, take a look at this news article recently southern Be- bench uh, of national green tribunal has with uh, Uh, has withhold withheld the in, environmental clearances that was earlier granted for setting up of fishing harbors in two villages in Vilipuram district and these two villages are located in intertidal area of Kali valley and wetland uh, bird sanctuary so this is the w- bird sanctuary is known to receive a lot of migrating birds apart from this uh, it it is also known to be a turtle nesting ground and it has it also has mangrove so the site has uh, were recla- classified under coastal zone regulation notification 2019 so the two villages that were chosen to set up the fishing harbors are ecologically sensitive areas see the national green tribunal noted that environmental impact assessment conducted for setting up of fishing harbors was not satisfactory this is the this is because the assessment does not include uh, detailed studies on turtle nesting grounds so citing all these reasons the southern bench of national green tribunal withheld the setting up of fishing harbors in this area so this is all about the news in the in this discussion let us understand the environmental impact assessment in detail now let us start with the a definition of environmental impact assessment see this uh, eia that is environmental impact assessment is a process of evaluating the likely environmental impacts that can be caused by a proposed uh, projects to put it simply uh, e- eia refers to as first to study that helps to understand the effect of proposed project on environment eia takes into broader impacts of proposed projects like um, uh, social economic cultural and health impacts now what is importance of eia eia helps to predict the environmental impacts at early stage that is in the stage of uh, project planning and the design and eia helps this case stakeholders to find some practical ways to reduce the adverse impacts on environment apart from this eia can also help them to shape their products to shoot the local environment so by conducting the environmental impact assessment the businesses can be able to achieve both the environmental and economic benefits now talking about eia in india um, the environmental impact assessment is covered under the environmental protection act 1986 this act contains various provisions on uh, eia process uh, uh, under the provisions of the act from time to time central government has issued uh, several eia notifications and the recent one is eia notification 2006 uh, this notification provides a four stage process for, for eia that is environmental impact assessment now let us uh, see the four stage process involved in eia the first stage is screening stage in uh, in this stage the proposed project is screened to determine whether it requires a full impact assessment study or partial study see some projects like cement pro- cement cement plants lead the uh, acid ba- uh, acid based 
acid battery manufacturing plants need a full impact assessment study uh, this is because they have the potential to cause more damage to the environment uh, but some projects like do not uh, cause severe damage to the environment so they, they need uh, a partial uh, study only uh, so in screening stage the project is screened to determine the impact assessment study then coming to the second stage it is called scoping stitch stage and in the stage uh, the project is studied to identify the potential impact on the environment apart from this alternative solutions are also identified in this uh, the in the stage to avoid the mighty um, mitigate the uh, comp mitigate or compensate the adverse impact on in biodiversity and the third stage is public consultation stage in this stage the people who are living near the pro project site would be consulted to assert their views in the stage the people who are living near the project stage uh, site are consulted and their views are recorded note that the outcome of the public consultations has to be included in environmental impact assessment and the concerns of the local people should be addressed if only the concerns are addressed then the project moves to the final stage the final stage is called appraisal stage in this stage the projects are scrutinized by the central level experts committee or stage le uh, state level com expert committee also involved in this committee scrutinizes the application and other documents of the proposed project if the committee is satisfied by a project proposal then it provides a environmental clearances to the project so this is the fourth stage of the four stages of the process involved in the environmental impact assessment in india now we shall see about the two types of project classified under eia um that is um eia notification 2006 see eia notification 2006 has categorized the projects into two categories namely a category a and b and this is based on the impact potential of the project now let us see the category a project uh, uh, see this category a requires a mandatory environmental clearances uh, generally they do not undergo screening process this is because the project under category a ultimately causes more damage to the environment some of the examples of the category a projects are ship breaking uh, uh, yeah, yachts petrochemical complexes petrol refining industries and nuclear power projects are as the category a projects are likely to harm the environment they undergo a complete environmental impact assessment process uh, now coming to the category b projects uh, see this category b projects undergo a screening process this category is further divided into category b1 project uh, category b1 project here category b1 project have the potential to um, harm the um, environment but the lesser the lesser than the category a project they also require a mandatory environmental impact assessment uh, some of the examples of category b1 projects uh, cold or processing units pesticide manufacturing units and so on now coming to the category b2 the project c uh, c the ca category b2 projects are excluded from the complete eia process this is because the project are less harmful to the environment apart from this the government also placed several projects in b2 category to avoid the eia process this is done in order to encourage the small and medium uh, industries in their business elevated roads bridges cement plants or some of the examples of the category b2 projects so this is all about this discussion here we have seen four stages of environmental impact assessments and two categories of project under environmental impact assessment so this is all about this discussion let us move on into the next topic look at this news it is about 15th brics submit that recently concluded in south africa the news is uh, that six um, new countries were confident membership uh, status to brics grouping the countries are argentina egypt ethiopia iran and saudi arabia and eae in our discussion today we will discuss about the significance of this edition uh, before the start of the 15th submit more than 40 countries had expressed interest in joining the brics after 40 countries 22 formally applied uh, to, applied it to join finally these are the six countries were selected based on the consensus now what is the significance of this new addition firstly the experts views that this is an energy 
centric expansion besides russia all of this all of the core brics countries like india china brazil and south africa are non energy producing countries if you look at the new additions like saudi arabia iran uae and egypt they are net crude oil exporters by adding this new members brics countries are trying to protect their energy security for example india reduced its oil imports from iran due to us pressure actions like this could be avoided in future secondly this ex- expansion can fill the gap left by the us in the middle east see the us played a role of peace broker in middle east but recently us has neglected this region this gap can be utilized by countries like china and india if you can recall china recently a bro- broke a reestablishment of ties between the saudi arabia and iran recent addition of saudi arabia iran and uae and egypt into the brics shows that brics is now ready to take up the role of peace uh, broker in middle east then uh, Um, then uh, the third significance is the uh, dollarization of global trade many brics countries have vocally challenged the use of us dollar in global trade and many countries in their individual capacity have been looking to some alternative use for example recently um, india um, signed a agreement with uae to trade in indian rupees instead of us dollar now with the addition of six new countries brics members will look at the ex- look at the expand the use of uh, their own nation- uh, national currency instead of us dollar this will reduce the global influence of us dollar next significance is the providing representation to brics uh, africa brics uh, was originally formed to ensure the cooperation between emerging countries and the global south the african continent that contains a majority of the global south was not represented enough in the international institutions only south africa was represented in the brics so to address this egypt and ethiopia have been given a membership in brics this will provide more voice to africa in brics grouping lastly the addition of members um, significant shift in the global order the us and europe have been trying to isolate the russia Uh, uh, russia iran and the brics nations have stayed in neutral towards russia so these are the significance of the major shift in the global order with respect to india uh, expansion will help india's push for un reforms uh, more representation of global south and expansion of un security council but the critics are pointing out that all new members are very close to economic ties with china and expansion of brics uh, grouping will only benefit china more than any other brics countries so this is all about this discussion now let us move on into the prelims practice question discussion look at the first problem practice question it is about defense acquisition council so what is the primary role of defense acquisition council the correct answer is option d it approves the defense procurement and modernization proposals Uh, now look at the second question it is about interstate water dispute uh, act 1956 look at the first statement president of india can set up a water dispute tribunal this is wrong because the central government has the power to set up the water uh, what dispute tribunal now look at the second statement tribunal must decide the dispute within one year this statement is also wrong because the tribunal must decide on the disputes within 3 years which can be extended for 2 uh, years so here they can ha- they have given a uh, one year and the statement is also incorrect look at the third statement all decisions of the tribunals are final and binding yes the we can we have seen this in the discussion no court can intervene in the dis- decision of this tribunal so this is a statement is correct so the correct answer is option a only one now this is this is a question quiz question for you today post the answers in the comment section this is the mains and uh, mains questions for uh, uh, mains question comment your uh, for you to try the try to write your answers in the comment section with this we have come to the end of the discussion if you like the video please share it with your uh, reference friends and to subscribe uh, to the channel thank you for listening have a nice day